Okay guys, this will be a tutorial on how to upgrade the firmware on the 9XR. Um, as you can see, we've got the 9XR here. Um, and there you go, it's all functioning A-OK. -okay. So what we're going to do is basically go through the process of um, updating the uh, firmware on that. And um, what I'm going to do is uh, start with a video that I did earlier on, which will actually show you how to install the software for the AVR uh, programmer. Um, it's a bit of a fiddly job installing that in Windows, but I'll run you through exactly how to do that, and that'll be an older video using the 9X, but the process is exactly the same. Um, it, Windows doesn't seem to readily just uh, install the uh, driver for it for that. So once that, that's probably the biggest hurdle you've got. Um, the other thing too is I purchased this from um, eBay, uh, and it came with a 10-pin to 10-pin uh, connector. Now the 9XR, the nine as you can see, has got a 6-pin connector. So what you want to do is make sure you purchase this from um, Hobby King. Hobby King has that already on their site, uh, and it comes with the proper connector for it. So that's probably the one to actually go for, uh, the one that Hobby King actually supplies. And it saves you actually making an adapter cable like I've actually done here, which just basically goes from 10-pin to 6-pin. Uh, so uh, that'll just save you some headaches. So what we'll do is switch to the other video and come back to this again. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go through the installation process. Um, first things first, uh, this is the board that I purchased and it's from um, eBay. I'll put a link in the uh, description, but I don't think you'll actually need it. Um, this board comes with a driver that you need which I'm about to install. So what we'll do is, um, depending on what, which one you've purchased, download the USB driver for it, which I'm going to go through now. Um, the driver is this one here. Okay, so I'm going to save the driver over here. This is where it's going. I'll basically create a folder called ER9X in my downloads. Okay, that's downloaded OK. And what I want to do is get that driver out of there. And that's the driver done. I'll delete this one. Okay, the next thing I'll do is basically plug in the uh, USB programmer and plugging it into my Mac. Okay, connect to Windows and you won't have to do this if you're using a Windows machine. Uh, you can install this one on a Mac too by the way, so um Okay that failed, which is kind of what we expected. Could spell it be good. So I'm going straight to device manager and I'm going to find that USB device which is this one here. I'm going to right click and select update driver. I'm going to browse for it. Uh, next. And what we'll do is go browse, so navigate to where that driver was. I can't remember which one is, I think it's this one here. It's mine. Open. OK. Next. Window doesn't like it, but that's OK. So there you go, it's uh, found it. And that's pretty much ready to go. So that's plugged in and that's working fine now. We can close this off. Next thing we'll do now is go to here, um, browser. And what I did was I did a Google search for ER9X and there's two links, the first two. One's to the ER9X firmware and one's to EEPE. -E. So first thing we'll do, we'll get the uh, firmware 
Now I think a e, p e will actually do it itself too, but I'll do this anyway just in case. And we'll open this guy up too. So I'll grab the firmware first. Um, and stable is the one we want. Whoops. Let's do that again. Right click because it's a hex file. I'm going to save it. We can put the hex there, that's fine. And close that off. I don't need this anymore. And we'll download the Windows installer. Save file. What we'll do is download the Windows installer. Save it there. Okay, and that's fine. So we can close this guy off. I don't think we need the browsers anymore. Close tabs. Okay, so first thing I'll do is install EE. PE install. Yes. We agree. Installation complete. And we'll launch it. It's saying a new version is available. Download it. Yeah, why not? There, save, yeah. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so once it's loaded, what you need to do next is just go into the configuration. And the only thing I had to do was just change this to USB and basically lift these at the defaults, and that seemed to work fine. Okay, so we're going to go through the process of um, installing the 9XR. Uh, sorry, the ER9X software onto your 9XR. Um, as you can see, I've got EPP um, running and um, we've got the 9X ready to go. I've got the battery inserted in this and you can remove the battery, it's up to yourself. Uh, the only key thing to remember is don't switch the uh, radio on at all during this whole process. So what I'm going to do is connect up my adapter and we'll go through this process. Okay, now you won't receive this message. The reason I've got this message is I'm actually doing this tutorial on a Mac. Um, it's just a little bit easier because these screen capture software on the Mac is uh, way better than uh, doing this on a PC. So I will go connect to Windows and that connects up fine. Now you'll notice as soon as I connect it up, the 9X actually comes on. Uh, so don't worry about that, that's normal, it's supposed to do that. Um, as you can see the 9X is on. We'll go through the process of uh, updating the firmware now. So what we'll do is uh, load the firmware and we'll flash, flash it. And what I've done is I've already named the firmware that I've just downloaded, which is the latest one, uh, latest ER9X firmware. And I've dated it the 26th, today's the 26th of the first month of 2013. And it's basically asking me, do I want to flash the actual memory? And I say yes. And as you can see, the screen's gone blank and we're updating the uh, firmware now. Just let it sit there. Whilst that happens, this process takes about 30 to 40 seconds, something along those lines, maybe a little bit longer. It's gone through and uh, written the firmware onto the actual radio and what it's doing now is basically reading what's been written here and confirming that it's actually um, A-OK. -okay. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, and it's written to the memory. I press OK. Um, sure well you can see that it's written to it. So all you need to do is just press A button, and what it'll do is go through and format it. And there you go, ER9X firmware is on um, this radio. So um, it's basically telling me let's throttle. Okay, we'll get out of that. Okay, so first thing it wants me to do is actually um, uh, calibrate the actual sticks. So I can go through and do that now. Um, and easiest way of doing that is hold this button down. We've gone to the menu, go in that direction again. And we select uh, calibrate, so press menu to begin. And that's what we want to do. It tells me to set everything to midpoint. So everything is at midpoint. And I'll press menu again. Now it's just a matter of moving the sticks. And then what we'll do is also do these guys. Backwards and forwards a couple of times. Put them back in the middle. Less terrible on that. But you can see it's actually... I've done these guys. And there you go. So that's been done. Press menu again when finished. And that's it. It's basically been programmed. Now the beauty of this is, once you've done that, um, I've actually got models already preset in this and I've got settings uh, configured into this radio. So what I'm going to do is write those back in there. So what I'll do is go open. Now you won't actually have this, but... Uh, so what we'll do is uh, select my file, which is this one, I've called Pauly. And that's got all my settings in there, including my um, V939. And what we're going to do is write to memory. And it's going through the process of uh, writing to memory right now. And there you go. It's got all models in there. Um, I can go into. It's got all my models there. Okay, I should see that. So there's all my models already there. And there you go, that's my uh, quad clipped up. And there we go, ER9X. I've got it unplugged and switched on. And it's working fine. I can switch to uh, my different models. So I go to uh, my um, Bixler. Or this is the one I've been flying recently, which is my little quad. And there you go. So it's working A-OK. -okay. So back to the software itself now. Um, the other beauty of this software is you can get into each one of your models there and just change all your settings, your mixes, whatever it, it is that you want to do. You can also go in and... Um, oh, wrong button. So yeah, what you can do also with this software is... Um, update the uh, screen that appears on the, um, the, uh, the splash, splash screen. You can modify that and insert your own file here. Um, load from hex. Is this it? No one doesn't work.
Um, if I go to There we go, and that's the original um, ER9X um, uh, little screenshot they've got there. So you can obviously modify that and or get another one uh, edited in Photoshop or whatever it may be, or MS Paint for that matter, and then um, transfer that to your hex file. It'll basically um, save it to a hex file, and then you basically do a firmware update again, and you'll have your own uh, splash screen. So um, there you go. The beauty of this is, like I said, you can do updates and what have you, and um, modify modify the firmware um, and customize to the way you want. You can add new models via the PC. Um, it's really a great way of going about doing things. Anyway, hope you found that useful. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and also leave feedback and comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.